Tonight, a community campaign launches to help stop domestic violence across the regions. And South Australia opens its borders back up to Melbourne amid no more COVID cases. From our seven Spencer Gulf Studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamein begins now. Good evening. A new domestic violence prevention program has been launched by White Ribbon, hoping to educate potential perpetrators and stop them before violence occurs. Community action groups to be set up and tailored to individual towns, funded by donations. Tackling violence against women before it even begins. White Ribbon's Community Response Fund hoping to use local organisations to stop abuse. We know that violence isn't unique to any one community, but the solutions are. The new program launching today would see grants of up to $5,000 given to eligible community groups for projects aiming to prevent violence and abuse against women. It could be a sporting club, it could be a faith-based group, it could be a workplace or it could be a town. Just really any group of people that want to take action against violence. The money coming from donations given to White Ribbon by the public. It's basically a way for diverse communities across the country um, to run local activities that will address the issue. Broken Hill has one of the highest rates of domestic violence in the state. White Ribbon hopes this program will bring down numbers in regional areas where fewer support services are available for victims. When it comes to regional communities, we want regional people leading the change. More information can be found on the White Ribbon Australia website. Lachlan Itter, 7 Spencer Golf News. And for anyone seeking support, you can contact 1800 Respect or in a personal crisis lifeline. South Australia will welcome back Melbournians this week with border restrictions to ease from Friday. Travellers from Melbourne will need to get tested on their first day in SA and isolate until they receive a negative result. Additional tests are also required on days three and five and they won't be allowed into high-risk locations, including aged care facilities and large events with COVID management plans. Further restrictions have been placed on travellers from Sydney as the Bondi cluster grows to 21, with testing requirements strengthened for some council areas. A teenager is in hospital with serious injuries after a single car crash at Riverton. Just before 10 last night, police and emergency services were called to Horrocks Highway after reports a car crashed into a tree. The driver and solo occupant, a 19-year-old from Kapunda, was airlifted to the Royal Adelaide Hospital and is being treated for serious but non-life-threatening injuries. The Horrocks Highway was closed for some time but has since reopened to all traffic. Around 15,000 fruit fly traps are being deployed across South Australia as the state government puts a dollar figure on the war against the pests. A total of 16 million is projected for 2021 to 2022, but it could increase if the state does not get on top of the outbreaks. There are currently 12 Mediterranean fruit fly outbreaks, including one in Port Augusta, and six Queensland fruit fly outbreaks across South Australia. Tough restrictions on the movement of fruit remain in place. Broken Hill Correctional Centre will be housing more inmates after the mice plague caused damage to a prison in the Central West. Corrective Services has released this picture from inside Wellington Correctional Centre showing some of the damage caused by the rodents. Commissioner Peter Severin saying up to 420 inmates will be relocated to other facilities across the state so repairs and deep cleaning can be completed. Still to come tonight, Broken Hill businesses prepare to profit from an upcoming Outback Music Festival. And the mobile blood bank rolls into Wyala with residents urged to donate. See you again shortly. Welcome back. New South Wales expects to be back in the black within three years, announced in today's state budget. Broken Hills TAFE will take $6 million of funding for an undercover training area. $27 million will go towards further sealing of the Silver City and Cobb Highways, with an additional $4.5 million for Pooncary Road. More social and Aboriginal housing has also been funded, Broken Hill receiving a share of $6 million. We can reveal new details on how Broken Hill will look during the Monday Monday Bash, when thousands of travellers converge on the city. Locals told to be patient and prepare now, with the population expected to boom for a number of weeks. 
Another big turnout as businesses plan for a big event. The Broken Hill Monday Monday Bash bringing 10,000 people to our city in less than two months time. It was a great turnout and it actually reinforces that businesses really, really are interested in this event. Council is working behind the scenes to help Broken Hill make the most of the predicted influx of travellers. They want to be stocked up if they're selling something um, and they might want to look at putting additional staff on. Council will be working with police to ensure traffic flows as smoothly as possible. Parking time limits will be heavily enforced in the CBD with overflow areas and shuttle buses to be established. Locals told to stock up on fuel and food beforehand to avoid queues. People will need to be patient. We are, we are a re relatively uh, small town and we're not used to having this many visitors at the same time. Business is told to update their trading hours online and with council while ensuring they're complying with COVID safe regulations. The idea of clean up Broken Hill Day also floated for the 8th of the 8th. But everybody gets out and cleans up their front yards and backing onto that council will look at holding some tidy towns events as well to do some of the roads leading into the community. From many accounts accommodation is essentially booked out in the weeks before and after the festival. Sites are still available at the race course with discussions continuing to open temporary campsites in the town. We want to be able to provide visitors uh, still be the place to stay and I think it all comes down to the communication. Another meeting directed at accommodation providers will be held next Monday. Lachlan Eater, 7 Spencer Golf News. Companies from around Port Lincoln and across the region have the opportunity to attend a business accelerator program. Showcase South Australia is hosting the one-off event, connecting the business community from all across South Australia. The Showcase SA Business Accelerator Program an opportunity for business owners in our regions to engage in meaningful conversations with industry leaders. It's about embracing South Australia as a whole and taking some uh, masterclasses and business um, upskilling and support. Four interactive sessions providing company leaders the platform to grow their business with the opportunity to share, collaborate and discover emerging opportunities to improve the marketability of the company. Bringing some inside tips and information for businesses on how they can scale up e-commerce, not just locally but around the world. The COVID pandemic forcing business owners to become creative at marketing their services. If the last 18, 12, 18 months has taught us anything is supply chain is paramount. Minister for Trade and Investment Stephen Patterson will open the event. Attendees will also enjoy a two course luncheon sampling Port Lincoln's finest produce. So there's an opportunity to meet the Minister, have a chat about any concerns or um, opportunities as a business owner that you don't always get with the Minister. The workshop will be held next Tuesday from 9 till 5 at the Lincoln Hotel. For more information or to book your place, head to the Showcase SA website. Residents from across the Spencer Gulf are urged to donate blood, with the Red Cross in desperate need of more supplies. A mobile blood bank has been set up at Wyala's Westlands Hotel for locals to help out with the campaign. A vital service needing people to roll up their sleeves. This mobile blood bank, set up in Wyala by the Australian Red Cross, encouraging residents to give generously. Wyala has always been fantastic to us, um, as have other um, areas right across South Australia. We have 28 spots that we visit across South Australia with the mobile units. The organisation currently needing donations of all blood types. Red blood cells only lasting 42 days, adding extra pressure to the demand. So we actually need 31,000 donations every single week that's across Australia to meet the demand of patients. And to give you an idea, that's one donation every 24 seconds. The push comes as the Red Cross wraps up National Blood Donor Week events, honouring those who regularly give blood. The service seeing an increase in donation appointments in the past few months. There is also good news for those who had their COVID-19 vaccinations recently, now allowed to donate blood after a week of getting the shot. There are currently 38 open appointments at the Wyala Mobile Blood Bank. 
Um, it's important that you call ahead so that we can ensure that we're socially distancing and we know um, who's coming through the doors. For more information on how to book, visit the Australian Red Cross's website. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Meanwhile, women in the Wyala region are urged to sign up for a breast screening session. A mobile screening unit has been set up at the Wyala Hospital and will be in the city until August. The service is available to women aged 50 to 74 free of charge. Breast Screen SA says regular checkups can detect changes to the breast that are too small to feel and can even help save lives. For more information, visit the Breast Screen SA website. Stay with us after the break. Awayala School encourages students to recycle and care for the environment. And the Wallaroo to Lucky Bay Ferry pauses its service. See you again soon. Hello again. UniHub Spencer Golf has had its second open day today at the Port Puri campus. The event giving high school students and community members the opportunity to explore tertiary pathways while connecting with local businesses. Opportunities on display here at the Port Pirie Uni Hub. It's our second day for, for the Uni Hub Open Days this year. Our, our first uh, ever one in Port Augusta was held yesterday. Community members, students, local businesses coming together to explore tertiary education and future career pathways. Organisations such as Nearstar, Centre Care, Uniting Country, Max Cranes and educational and health services getting involved, as well as the UniHub's partner universities. With Port Perry Regional Council also seeing the benefits of studying locally. So at the council we have engineers, accountants, scientists, and so we can um, partner with the UniHub to put prospective employees and also existing employees through courses here. These students saying today's event has made them feel more comfortable studying through UniHub. Some even choosing their degree. Looking into business and creative arts, yeah. I live in Gladstone so it's quite close and it's just accessible. Yeah, I'm looking into studying secondary education. We've learnt like how everything works and how well supported we will be by studying here. Also saying studying here in the region is her preferred choice and is something she is looking forward to. It allows me to continue on with everyday life while still getting that degree and opening up my career options. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Students at Awayala Secondary School are being encouraged to care for the environment. Samaritan College has overhauled its waste and recycling program making students think about where their rubbish goes. Making a positive difference for the environment. Samaritan College changing the way students throw away their lunchtime rubbish. So we spent about uh, 18 months to two years prepping with the students, with the staff, even involving some outside people who are experts in this area about what type of bins, their locations, but more importantly what actually happens with the rubbish once it leaves the school. The school overhauling its entire waste strategy separating rubbish and recycling into different bins. The aim, getting children thinking about where they should be placing their waste. And they know it's just automatic that they should be putting the right rubbish in the right bins and, and you do see the students stopping and thinking about where it's going, which is great to see, and some are automatic, but it's, it's been a real cultural change over many years and it's great to see. It's not only the students being proactive with the change in regime, Staff also taking a major role with the new program, with ground crews checking the bins before they get sent off for processing. And they report back to the students, so uh, yeah, it's all collected locally and uh, gone off to the right places to be recycled properly. Teachers are also encouraged to implement the new waste program into their lessons to help enforce the message of sustainability. Recycling and reusable and sustainability is way more than just a couple of bins, so this is just a part of what we do and it's always reviewed. It's hoped the new program will get students to make sustainable choices even after they leave the college. Mark Zita, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Around 250 students are set to gather at Navigator College in Port Lincoln early next week, with schools from across the Air Peninsula to take on this year's Science and Engineering Challenge. The outreach program conducted nationally by the University of Newcastle designed to inspire secondary school students to study maths and science at the senior level. We're really excited to get it back up and running so we have uh, eight school teams uh, coming in on Monday to compete uh, at the high school level and then uh, we're the only one in South Australia that offers the same event but this time for primary school kids which we're running next Tuesday. The participants will be playing for the famous Perpetual Trophy. 
The ferry service between Lucky Bay and Wallaroo will be out of action for more than a month as the passenger vessel undergoes scheduled maintenance. Spencer Gulf Sea Road has announced its ferry service will be temporarily halted from this Sunday to July 29, with the scheduled maintenance aiming to ensure the longevity of the vessel. The company is aiming to return the passenger ferry to service by July 30. A community call to action has been made to recreational off-road users. The Air Peninsula Landscape Board pushing for an increased responsibility from off-ride users around fragile coastal salt marsh areas. The main issues are said to be caused by drivers not sticking to the main tracks, with rubbish also causing serious damage. Salt marshes help protect the shoreline and are important habitats for fish and birds in the region. Stay with us after the break. We'll have all the results from weekend sport from across the region. And Alex Sykes will join us with the weather details. See you again shortly. Welcome back. It was a bumper weekend of sport across the region, with netball returning to the courts after the long weekend. Our reporter Edward McCarroll has this week's sports wrap. In Port Pirie netball over the weekend, Solomon Town moved up the ladder with a win over St Mark's Celtics. Solly held strong over Celtics with a 17-goal win. Scarman, Spadavecchia and Pryor voted the best players of the match, with Chloe Nibs claiming the A1 Intersport Player of the Week. In the other game, Central Risen defeated Port 58-43. In Round 7 of Port Augusta Netball this past weekend, the Vikings defeated Quorn. The final score, 63-54. In Wyala, YCW defeated Ravens, 51-30. And in the other game, top team Kiwi has defeated Warriors by 37 points. In Port Lincoln, it was a tight match between Boston and Imperial, with Boston securing the win over Imperial by 5 goals. In the other game, Wayback defeated top team Winella, the score 50-43. Over to the Port Pirie Hockey, St Andrews lost to Park Royal Panthers by four goals. St Andrews then went on to win against Risden by one goal. And in the other game between Risden and Park Royal, Royal delivered a thumping with the score being 0-3. In Port Lincoln Hockey, the Marauders defeated Flinders 3-0 and the Panthers defeated the Wanderers 4-1. In Broken Hill Soccer, West had a devastating loss to St. Joe's. The final score, 0-7. In the other game, Alma secured the win over Celtic by four goals. And finally, for Broken Hill Rugby, round six of the Musicians Club Outback Rugby League took place. Pantu Warriors smashed the Silver City Scorpions 60-0. Wilcannia Wildfowlers defeated the Scorpions women 44-16. Wilcannia Boomerangs defeated Menindee Yabbies 22-18. And that's it for sport. If your team would like your results featured on our bulletin, please contact our Facebook page. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Alex Sykes. Thanks, Ruby. It was a wet one across most of our region today and it looks likely to continue over the next few days. But first, let's take a look at today's temperatures. From 3pm, Port Lincoln was 14. A broken hill missed the rain, recording partly cloudy conditions and was 18 degrees. Clare reached a top of 12. Looking further out across the region now, Port Augusta was 18. Wowler and Port Pirie were both 17. Woodna was 13. Kadena and Cleve both reached 14 and Cooper Pedy reached a top of 12 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, a cloud band crossing central parts of South Australia with a trough is generating some light rain. Patchy cloud behind this with a cold front is producing showers and a few storms. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. North to north easterly winds 15 to 25 knots, seas around one and a half to two and a half metres and south to southwesterly swell below one metre. And a short time ago, the Weather Bureau had issued a number of warnings, including marine wind warning and a warning to sheep graziers. A shower or two for Port Lincoln and a max of 15 degrees tomorrow. Cleve becoming windy and partly cloudy 14 degrees. Woodner, a possible shower also set to reach 14. Whaler, a shower or two 17. Port Augusta, rain at times, also 17 degrees there. 
Kadena showers easing and 16. Port Piri rain easing 17. Clare similar conditions set to top 13 and Broken Hill will reach a high of 16 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now and windy in Cooper Pedy and Broken Hill on Thursday. Rain across the rest of the Gulf. Temperatures are set to be in the mid to high teens. Partly cloudy across Cooper Pedy and Broken Hill on Friday. Rain across the rest of the region. Slightly cooler conditions temperatures set to be in the mid teens again but the weekend is looking to clear up partly cloudy conditions across most of the region on Saturday showers are forecast for Port Lincoln and Adelaide temperatures in the low to mid teens so Ruby it appears the wet weather is here to stay for the rest of the week at least so rug up and don't forget the umbrella and that's all the weather from me for tonight see you later this evening with a weather update it's back to you Lovely, thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Tuesday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening. And John and the team will join you tomorrow with more local news. Good night.